All right. Well, again. welcome. <laughs> no worries. So no, welcome have. everyone um, to this workshop by learnwordpress.org. Um, this this workshop is called I Just Got This WordPress and Don't Know How to Use It. Um, so this is meant for folks that have inherited a WordPress site um, and are, are beginners and don't know what to do with it. So that's what we're here for. Um, the next slide, please. And so what we'll be talking about today are the basic concepts of WordPress and web hosting, some important habits for keeping a WordPress site healthy, um, and how to identify and learn uh, the specific editor that's in use on your WordPress site. That said, on the, the next slide, what we won't be covering today is editing content in WordPress or troubleshooting a broken site. Uh, if you have any questions about a site that you're working on uh, yourself, um, we if we have time, we can go over some specific questions at the end of this workshop. And so that said, I would like to introduce you to our, our guest today, Tiffany Bridge. Um, she's been using WordPress for about 18 years, um, probably since the beginning, right? That's that's almost WordPress the very beginning. Now. Yeah. 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 Same here. I've been saying 16. I was just like, no, I remember using WordPress pretty close to the beginning myself. So we are old school WordPress users here. Um, she's uh, the product manager for WordPress e-commerce at Nexus and a contributor to the hosting team on the WordPress open source project. Um, so take it away, Tiffany. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming in tonight. Um, you know, when uh, when Courtney and I started um, doing this workshop, I had really been thinking a lot about um, people who, you know, walk into WordCamps or walk into WordPress meetups that I've been part of. Um, and they're always, and they always have the same story, right? Um, they're volunteering for a nonprofit and somebody just handed them the keys to the website. Now they're in charge of the website now and they've never used WordPress before, or they've got a new job and their job is now the WordPress website, but they've never used WordPress before. And they're, they're doing their best. They're going to like word camps and meetups, and they're not always finding that those, uh, workshops are at the level that they need. And so I really wanted to put something together for um for folks to like just here you go here's a wordpress it's already built um you didn't build it maybe the person who built it before isn't there anymore and now you're in charge of it so um with that in mind what i'm wondering is um all right come on now has this ever happened to you um have you logged into your wordpress and seen like a mess like this right there's all these alerts they all look important. You don't know what any of them mean. Like what's a foreign object cache drop in? Honestly, what is that? Um, there's all these like little red bubbles um, with, uh, with numbers in them and that looks important. Otherwise, why would it be in red? But you don't know what any of that means or what it's for. Um, that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Like you, you log into WordPress and you're suddenly hit with all of this stuff that feels very overwhelming because it is overwhelming. Um, and I want to talk about kind of how how to sort of address those things. So the first thing is don't panic. It's OK. OK, if the website is working right now, we don't need to panic. It's fine. First, though, we're going to get into some vocabulary um, just to make sure that we all know kind of what I'm talking about as we move through here. We're going to talk about like basic pieces of WordPress. There is WordPress, which is the software that runs your website, right? It's like software and a database, and it exists to put content into the database and bring the content back out and display it as a website. And inside that WordPress website, there's you have the theme, um, which is kind of the, the little bit of software that covers the look and feel. Um, and then you also have um, plugins, which are the ways that you add additional functionality to WordPress. Like if you just installed WordPress fresh, you'd have a blog, basically. Um, but with plugins, you can add all kinds of things. You can add an event calendar. You can add um, a, an e-commerce store. You can add um, a, like a 
like an online learning management system. They can do all kinds of things with WordPress plugins. And so those really feature in, um, figure into a lot of what we talk about when we talk about managing a WordPress site. What we're really talking about is managing all the things you add to your WordPress site. Um, I also frequently refer to plugins as the cause of and solution to most WordPress problems. Um, it's always a good idea to, to dig into plugins if you're running into an issue. Um, and then of course there's the content, right? The texts, the files, the pages, the posts, like all the stuff that makes your website, your website, that's your content. Is any, before I go any further, does anybody have questions about anything we've covered on this slide? There is a uh, question uh, if we could make the slides bigger, but I believe you already have a full screen. Is that right? Yeah, the slides are already about as big as my giant, as my big monitor can get. Okay. Yeah, there's a tip from uh, another attendee to minimize the speaker view and it should show the slides larger in Zoom. So yes, that's a good yeah. tip. Yeah, I do that. Um, but we will have, well, I think these will be downloadable afterwards, yeah? Great. Okay, so I'm gonna move forward. All right, so there's your WordPress website. Your Word, but that's not the only thing you need to know about. You also need to know about, and here I actually have made it made it small. Um, there's hosting, which is kind of like the house your WordPress lives in, right? Like that's the hosting refers to like the server that is serving your website. That's like the people you pay money to to make sure your WordPress is on the internet. And then of course, there's also the domain name, which is like the address of your house. Um, it's, you know, example.com, it's yourwebsite.com. It's that, um, it's the way, it's the thing that you type into your browser's address bar to get to your website. Um, those things are all like, those are all just terminology that you need to know in order to, um, to manage a website. So what do you do with all this? Okay, so you've logged into your website, you've seen all this stuff, you don't know what any of it is. We're going to assess it. First step, you got to figure out where your website is hosted. Now, sometimes when they hand you the keys to the website, they'll tell you this. They already know. Sometimes you could ask and they'll be like, uh, I don't know. Um, and if that's the case, you, there's a couple of things you can do. You can, um, you can go to whoishostingthis.com and try to figure it out. Um, it'll look at the website, it'll look at the, the domain name servers, it'll make an educated guess about where the website is being hosted. Is it um, at GoDaddy? Is it at Bluehost? Is it at LiquidWeb? Is it at Nexus? Um, but if, if that doesn't help you, if that isn't enlightening, or if it tells you something not terribly useful like Cloudflare, um, basically what you need to track down is kind of follow the money. Um, somebody's credit card is getting charged for that website and you just need to know who's charging it. Right, so figure out who's handling, who would handle the money for that, and that's probably your best bet um, for figuring that out. Is just figuring out who's paying the bill, and then what, who's bill, who's issuing the bill. So, once you know where it's hosted, you can figure out other important things like, are there regular backups being taken of your website? That's going to be really important for some of the stuff we're about to do, um, because if you have a good backup, you can also you can always recover from anything that you may have blundered into. Um, and secondarily to that, is there a staging site? What's the staging site? A staging site is like a perfect copy of your WordPress website, but it's not your live website, so you can break it and no one will notice or care. Like that's the most important thing to know about a staging site. It's the place where it's safe to break things. Um, something that I really firmly believe is that the best way to learn to use words, WordPress is to just get in there and start using WordPress. But when somebody hands you a website that's already built and that people are using, that can be really scary, right? Because you don't want to break it. What if you don't know how to fix it? Um, that's what a staging site is for. You can break it over and over again. Break it so bad you don't know how to fix it, delete it, and make another staging site. And ideally, if you're lucky, um, the website is being hosted in an environment where there's like a one-click staging feature. Um, a lot of web, a lot of web hosts have these. Um, not everyone does. Um, it's sort of a, a feature that is more common on like what's called like managed WordPress, which really just means like it's a little bit more money, but there are more features like backups and staging and things like that. Um, but if you're not hosted in an environment like that, there are plugins that you can use to create staging sites. You can take a backup and just in, like restore it on another website 
that you host somewhere else. Um, there's a lot of options here. Um, it can be hard to know how to do that, but I definitely recommend like finding a way to have like a second copy of the website somewhere so that you can play on and feel free to break. Um, because I, I truly, like I said, I truly believe the most important way to learn WordPress is to just use it and don't be afraid of it. Um, that's how I learned it. And to be fair, 18 years ago, there was a lot less of WordPress there is now, than there is now. And so having a staging site was less important, right? There were fewer things to break. I still broke them. I broke all of them. I broke a lot of WordPress sites um, in the first few years that I was using it. So um, I definitely want to encourage you to really um, dig in on this question of backups and staging sites, because I think it will, it will help you be brave. And that's what you need to be. You need to be brave. Why, am I, why is my slide not advancing? Great. Are there software updates to be done? Okay, so when we were looking at that slide earlier with all the like the red dots on it, at least one of those red dots is about software updates that need to be done. Okay, um, here I'll flip out into, this is one of my demo WordPress sites. You can see here under plugins, I've got four that need to be updated. Um, that's important. You can see that there are plugins here that need to be updated. The reason that that is important is because the number one cause of damage to WordPress sites from like hacks and malware and stuff like that, it's, it's plugins that don't get updated. So you got to keep those update, up to date as much as possible. However, because plugins are written by lots of different people and updated at lots of different rates, Sometimes it is possible that updating something will break it, which is another reason for the important for the staging site. And we'll talk about that again in a little bit. Um, do I have access to tech support? Now, some of that is some of this question is like, what kind of support is available from your web host? They can help a little bit. But the other thing is like, are you lucky enough to work for an organization that has an IT department that's helping support the website? That's very exciting and that's very important for you to know. Um, do, you know, who, who does your organization call if there is a website outage? Is there somebody who, work, who works on it either on a regular paid basis or an ad hoc basis? It's just important to know that. In a lot of cases, there won't be anyone and like you are now that person. Um, but if there is somebody who is, you know, more technical than you that's available, like that's an important thing to know because then you know who to call. That's just um, a good situational thing to be aware of. And then finally, which editor is the site using? And I'm, I'm hitting this question here because the, the editor experience in WordPress can be a little bit fragmented, right? Um, there can be kind of the default, why, why did that go away? Here we go. Um, the, the default WordPress editor, the block editor, which is, this is what it looks like on my, on, uh, on one of my demo sites, right? You've got like your post information over here. The, if you clicked this, it would be block information. This is the default block editor. This is the major, this is the default WordPress editor experience currently in WordPress, but it wasn't always. We used to have something called the classic editor and a lot of older WordPress sites are still using it. And it will probably still be in use for a little while. Um, so if your editing window looks like this, this is called the classic editor. And then sometimes because the classic editor lasted so long and, and um, WordPress did get that nice visual editing experience um, when people were ready for it to have it, um, there are lots of plugins that are also editors. And so you might have something else entirely. You might have something like this. This is an example of a third-party editing tool. Um, and so it's really important to figure out which editor you're using because a lot of the experience of using WordPress is just like Googling up tutorials and figuring out how to do stuff. And you wanna make sure that you're looking at the right set of documentation because the documentation of wordpress.org is gonna focus on the block editor and occasionally the classic editor. But if you're using, for example, Elementor, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're reading Elementor's documentation um, and seeking help from their help files because the other stuff isn't necessarily gonna be as much use to you. Um, and so that's a that's just a really important thing you need to know. It's like which editor even are you using? And there are more. There's Beaver Builder and WP Bakery and like er there's all kinds of editors. And um, but these are kind of the three big ones, I think. Um, there are a few more, but um, 
that's a that's an important question to have answered. Okay, so now that we know whether or not we have backups and we know whether or not we have a staging site and we know where our website is hosted and what editor we're using, it's time to get the house in order. And you'll, you'll notice as I'm going through these slides that I just, I love a list. And I feel like, I don't know about you, lists make me feel very confident because I feel like I have all of my ducks in a row. And so that's what we're doing on this slide. Um, first, take a backup, just take a backup. Um, Ideally, your host will do this for you. Like your, your host will have a tool available. Um, like for example, where I work, this is what our backups look like. If I, I, I get a backup every night and if I wanna take one that's like right before I get started doing something, I can just click this button here and create another one. Um, that's Ideally that's available to you. If not, you're gonna wanna install like a backup plugin and run a backup that way. And there are again, lots of those but um, definitely do get a backup because that's going to be like, if something goes wrong and you get worried that you've broken something, the backup is what is going to help you get it back to where it was before. Um, create a staging site if possible. If you, I hope you have one through your host. If you don't, I believe there are even plugins that'll do that for you. The last one I was aware of was um, WP stage coach. I don't know if that's still a thing, but um, you know, there are ways to do this. You can take a backup and just like restore the backup somewhere else. Like I said earlier, you can have a second WordPress. There are places to get um, to host WordPress very inexpensively if you need to, like if you have to pay out of pocket in order to get one, um, in order to get a staging site, you can do that very cheaply if you have to. Um, but please do give yourself, please do give yourself a safe playground for this. Um, it's important. And then you're going to start updating things. And when you are new to a site, I definitely recommend the practice of updating your plugins one at a time. And you literally are just going to go through your plugin menu like this, and you're just going to click update and wait for things to update. And then you're going to check the front end of the site to make sure nothing broke. So I've updated a plugin. Now that was a kismet. It's not going to change anything on my front end, but what I can do is just go look at my front end and click through and see if anything broke, right? I don't have a lot on this site, so there's not a whole lot for me to check, but you get the idea. Um, and then you're gonna go back and you're gonna, and you're gonna update the next thing. Um, and this is a little bit of a pain in the neck, especially if you have a lot of these updates to do. But I think it's very important while you're still getting used to what everything on the site does, that you don't do the bulk update at once. You will probably get to a point where you're just up here like bulk actions, update all. I love it. That's, I call that the YOLO method. I think, um, and I think it's great. I'm actually a big fan of it. But when you're updating plugins for the first time, especially if it hasn't been done in a while, you want to do that. You want to take a little bit more care and ideally do it on a staging site first. Um, once you've done all the updates on the staging site and they've proved to not be consequential, you can update things a little bit more quickly on live. Though, again, you do always want to make sure that you're checking up on things. You would hate to break something and then like walk away from the computer for two days, right? So, um, but that's how you're gonna go through that process. And then you're gonna note anything to follow up on. Like for example, some plugins are what we call premium plugins. And that means that the developer of that plugin charges a fee for the ongoing updates to the plugin. Um, and when that happens, there's like a license key that you put in somewhere. And when the license expires, like if somebody hasn't paid for it recently, you stop getting updates. So those updates aren't going to run. Um, just take a note of that because the answer might be that you just need to go buy a license key or figure out who's responsible for updating that license key or buying that license key. The answer might be that you don't need that plugin. The answer might be, um, that uh, they're your web developer who built the site is supposed to take care of that for you. Um, you that's a, a question that you're gonna have to answer. Um, you know, but anything else that you see, like anything else that like alerts that you can't dismiss, things like that, just go through and start making changes. Like in here, um, I know I've, I see I've got this like WooCommerce database update required. Like I've got a, I ran a WooCommerce update and then it gave me this message. And now I've got to make sure I actually follow through on this. Um, and again, this is an area where we just, as you do it, you want to go through and just make sure that nothing on your site has changed. Um, if it does change and you don't know how to get it back, that's what your backup is for. 
And by the way, when you're using your backups, you don't have to restore the whole backup. A thing you can do is download your backup, open it up. And this is maybe a little bit advanced topics, but a thing you can do is just get the old version of the plugin out of the backup and put it up on the server and overwrite the plugin that updated and broke your site. Um, that's, that's a little bit advanced. Um, you have to get comfortable with like FTP and stuff, but that's something that you can learn about in your web hosting portal. I don't want to get too deep into that because now I'm like off in a tangent about troubleshooting a broken site. And I said, I wasn't going to do that tonight, but I, I find that topic irresistible because it's always where people panic. And I hate to see people panic about WordPress. And then you can start exploring your content editing, which is where the fun is in WordPress. Um, I really encourage you, even if you don't have a specific update that you're trying to do, if you've got a staging site, just get into the editor and start writing content. Start inserting things into pages just to see how it works, right? Um, to me, like this is the fun part because especially lately, and you know, when I was first teaching myself WordPress, like, it was, it was the most basic editor, right? It was just a text box. It didn't even, it wasn't even as rich as like the classic editor was. But now like, it's really fun. Like you get to do all kinds of fun things with it. Um, you can like drop in a whole photo gallery. You can drop in like a whole like block pattern library, right? It's cool. Like you can do fun things now that you couldn't always do. Um, that you couldn't always do before. Like instead, if I want this layout, I can just drop this whole layout in and then just start editing it. Like just get in there and start doing it. It's fun. Um, and I really like, I, I hope that you find some like excitement in learning how to do this. Um, you know, as WordPress has started to change and we're, we're moving from a state of like these classic things where the theme was very locked down and you just had a few options to customize. We're now to something called block themes where you can edit the whole theme in an editor. Like the last time I played with it, I just started giggling because it was so much fun and it was the most fun I've had in probably probably 16 years in WordPress. Um, so I really want to encourage that sense of exploration. Um, but I want to pause here um, for a second about and just check on questions from people um, in the chat here. Um, just yeah, anything, was, like I, I, I threw a lot of content at you. So how are we doing? Um, Laura asked if um, we can use local as a staging area. Um, I've only used local for demos. So um, I, mean, I never tried using a staging. Here's the thing. I would not re rely on local as staging forever. You absolutely can't, especially if, if that's the easiest way for you to get a staging site quickly. Yes, do that. I don't think it is a long-term substitute for um, a server environment that is as close as possible to the server environment your actual site is hosted on. I mean, the idea of having a managed host that has like one-click staging is that, that staging has pretty much the same environment that your existing website does. And so it's going to be the most like one-to-one -one correspondence. Um, and I don't think local can necessarily provide you with that. But if you're just trying to get in and like learn some WordPress and run some tests, sure, use local. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, and John had asked um, on that last slide, like if there was a problem with the update, what next? And I thought you kind yeah. of touched on that. In, yeah, uh, I touched on that. Um, so ideally what you're gonna do there is like restore your backup. Um, and there are a couple of ways you can do that. You can restore your whole backup. Um, you could just like restore the entire site back to the state that it was before you started doing anything. Now, the disadvantage of that is that you're going to lose anything that you did between the point where you took the backup and the point where you stopped doing things. Um, and so if there was like, if there were multiple successful updates in there, you will lose those as well. Um, that's not necessarily the end of the world. It can be a problem if you have like an active e-commerce store where there's orders coming in all the time. So another way you can do it um, is you can download the backup and it'll come in some sort of like zipped compressed format most of the time. And you open it up and you'll see as you like kind of get through the directory tree in the, in the folder, um, you'll get to where your plugins are stored. And that plugin from that 
backup is the last version of the, is the version of the plugin from before you ran the update. And as you get into your web hosting portal, and this is just, you know, like I said, this is our web hosting portal. This is just what ours is like. Um, you can um, get the information you need to use like an FTP client to upload the old plugin to overwrite the new one. That means you have to get comfortable using an FTP client. An FTP client, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. That's just a fancy way of saying it shows you your website in a folder folder structure here, and it shows the folder structure of your computer here, and you can drag files in between. Um, a good idea is to get comfortable using one of those before you need to, so that you're not doing it like, oh my God, I broke my site, and now I have to learn to use an FTP client. Um, that's a thing that is helpful to do. That's another way you can try to restore things without having to restore your entire backup. This is another um, point about backups to be aware of. It's a good idea to know what kind of backups you have from your host. Like at Nexus, where I work, um, our like backups that we provide to clients are what are called block level backups, which means when we restore, we're restoring like literally like the bit by bit so that the hard drive is exactly in the same condition. It's an amazing backup strategy in terms of restoring things accurately. It is not a great backup strategy if you just wanna like fix something you broke real quick because a block level backup can take hours to restore. So I can't say that I recommend that for like day-to-day -day use. In that case, you might want a more plugin based backup solution. There are lots of plugins that you can use for backups. And I know a lot of hosts will say, oh, don't tell people to use um, backup plugins because they, they consume a lot of like resources and we do that for them. But my, my thing is I would rather have like the built-in suspenders of backups, right? My host has a backup. I have a, a backup that's stored somewhere else. Even if that means you're downloading a backup to Dropbox every night. Um, I just like to have my own backups for anything that's like important. Um, I mean, I've got all these demo sites and I don't bother with that because they're just demo sites and I kind of throw them out. But um, but for something that's important, like have two backups, have two backup strategies. That's a great idea. Up your backups. Um, <laughs> we have uh, actually quite a few questions flowing in. Do you want to go over them right now? Or Yeah, let me please. Um... Let's see, if you have a, st a site that you're no longer using that already has content, can you back up to it and your, will your new content overwrite the old content? Yes, if you, over, if you restore a backup to any WordPress, even if that WordPress already has stuff in it, it'll overwrite the old stuff. So if you care about the old stuff, back it up too. But um, if, if you're ready to be done with it, um, yeah, you can restore right over the top of that. Um, how do you know if you have a staging site? That is a great question. Hopefully your hosting plan has it. Um, a thing that is, it kind of depends from one host to the next, like how obvious they make it, but a host that has like one click staging is going to show you like here, I've got staging and dev here in my, in, and, and again, this is just our particular portal. Um, I can see that there is a staging environment. Um, on a different site in my portal, I would have a button to create one. Um, and you just sort of, you have to look for the feature. And if you have to, like, if you really are stuck with that, open a ticket with your host. That's what the, that's what they're there for, right? Get them to tell you, make them tell you. Uh, where do you store the backups? So a lot of backup plugins will store the backup, like literally in the web directory with your website. Don't do that. That sucks. Um, most most decent backup plugins will will have an option for you to store your backups offsite, whether that's like in your Dropbox account, in your Google Drive, um, in an in an Amazon S3 bucket, which is a little bit advanced. Um, there are a lot of options for storing the backups. Do not make a practice of storing your backups on the same web server where your website is, because what if something happens and you get hacked? Now your backup is untrustworthy, and that and then what are you going to do, right? So uh, so store your backups somewhere else. There are lots of play. I mean, even if you download it to your local hard drive, that is better than storing it next to your website. Yeah, that brings up a question that came earlier of uh, someone said, or Desta says, my website got deleted. How do I get it back? Oh, hopefully your host has backups. Um, if it was more than 30 days ago, your host probably does not still have backups. But if it was recently, your host hopefully has backups. Um, if they don't have backups, then I'm I'm very sorry. 
that you may be out of luck. Um, and whether or not your host has backups for you will depend a lot on like what level of plan you have. Like there's budget hosts where you're, you know, where you're paying like three or $4 a month for hosting. They're not doing anything for you. They're not backing you up. They're literally just putting you on the internet and everything else is on you. Whereas if you're paying for something that's a little bit like a little bit higher end, they are, they may very well be taking backups for you. So definitely do check in your hosting portal for that. Ah, if you use the staging site to try out something and you like it, how do you make that the main site? This is such a great question. So smart. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of different situations. Some hosts have the ability to just push from staging to live. And what that usually means is they will just copy the entire staging site to live, to your, to your main site. You want to be really careful with that, right? You want to be really careful with that, especially if you have e-commerce, because you might lose orders that way. Um, you want to be really careful with that, because if you did any of that, like, sandboxy stuff we were talking about earlier, and, like, you junked up a couple of pages, and then you push staging to live, um, it's going to push the whole thing, including the junk. Um, so I would say if you did something on your staging site, and your staging site wasn't, like, really fresh when you did it, your best bet is to just do it again on the live site. Does a staging site have to have its own URL and hosting? Um, if, you are, if you are working with a host that has staging included as part of the plan, that will all be handled for you. Um, it'll have like a, like a temp URL, like these URLs on my site here, um, this like D2, DB9, this is like what a, that's what a URL looks like at Nexus before you've put a domain on it. And so this would be what a staging URL would look like for us. Um, and so like, you know, no matter where you're hosting, there will be something like that. Um, if you are working with a host that does not give you a staging site, you've got to figure out where to host it, right? And you might be able to do it just right there next to your website in your hosting, and that's fine. Or you might um, have to have, you might have to upgrade a plan, or you might have to have, like somebody said, use local, which is like a, a Local is a tool that helps you run WordPress like on your desktop computer. Um, that's an option. Um, but they don't typically need their own domain name if that's what you're asking. Like you don't have to go buy like mystagingwebsite.com or whatever. Do I know if HostGator provides staging? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I haven't looked into what HostGator offers recently. Um, but if they do, like that'll be like when you click down and like, um, look at like what the features of their plans are like they'll tell you if they have staging sites um, because nobody is hiding that information because it's an important feature if they don't say that they have it they probably don't if they say that they do then they do um, but I don't happen to know it, it would probably also depend on like the level of plan you purchased from them some plans may not have them some of the higher end plans may come with that oh look at that somebody has posted a link that's very helpful thank you Oh, that was you, Courtney. All right. We're good on questions for the moment. Cool. So, um, okay, so step three, we're just, this is now just, we're gonna move forward, right? Regularly manage the site. Make sure that there's a regular cadence of, back in, of backups and updates. If you've got a host that's backing up for you, they're probably backing up nightly. Um, if you have used, um, if you have purchased a backup plugin, um, make sure that you have it configured to backup regularly. Um, nightly is great, um, but if, if for whatever reason, like storage for that becomes a problem or like performance becomes a problem, weekly is probably okay if it's not a super busy site. Um, and then also make sure that you are regular, regularly doing updates. I like to do updates on sites that are important at least weekly. Some people only do it monthly, but make sure that you are doing it on a regular basis. Um, don't let your site, your plugins, your themes and stuff get too far out of date. Don't let WordPress itself get too far out of date. What WordPress releases updates regularly that are important to apply because um, that's where all your security fixes and stuff are gonna be. And you wanna make sure that you're keeping up with those to keep your site safe. Okay, and then once you've got that done, you're going to find some tutorials for WordPress in general and for your editor in specific. 
Um, the reason that we aren't getting too far into, you know, editing tonight, like I said, is because there are so many different editors, but also like the internet is full of information about how to do this. Um, and like, I can't cover like every possible permutation of how you would want to like edit your content. Right. But I guarantee you whatever weird specific thing you want to do in WordPress, somebody out there has written an article for it. Um, and the internet's full of is is full of those tutorials. Learn.wordpress.org, of course, is a great source for learning all kinds of things about your WordPress site. Um, but there are also plenty of other websites. There's plenty of like bloggers about WordPress out there. Um, so definitely do like get out there and find the tutorials. And now that you have all of this vocabulary and you kind of know what they're talking about, you'll find them a lot easier to follow than you might have before this session. And then finally, like leverage, leverage that staging site to get brave and experiment. Um, start or start your own site, set up a WordPress blog, um, get in there and play with WordPress. It's the only way, in my opinion, to learn it. Like you can read tutorials till you're blue in the face, but until you're in there, like clicking on the buttons and developing the muscle memory for how you want to use the editor, um, that's really where you start to become like a competent user, a confident word, uh, user of WordPress. Um, and also, I just want to want you to know that, like, you've totally got this. You can you can do this. You are already well on your way. Um, and I I believe in you and I hope you believe in you, too. And that is the end of the content I have prepared for you. So if there's more questions, more discussion, would love to open up for that. Yeah, I always like to hear if there's something new that you learned in today's session, feel free to drop that in the chat. Um, and yeah, the floor is yours, folks. Um, oh, Linda, what kind of problems are you having with, with customizing your site? Let's talk about it. Ooh, what's the best way to find someone to help you? Oh yeah, that's a great question. great question. The best way, gosh. Um, well, it kind of depends on what sort of help you need. Um, because if you are, if you're looking for help solving a particular problem with a plugin, um, plugins will have their own kind of support, um, su like kind of means of support. Any plugin that you download from the WordPress.org plug of repository, developers are supposed to support their plugins there, whether or not they do can be a little bit hit or miss. Um, if it's a premium pro plugin, you are paying for that support. So definitely chase them for that. Um, if it's problem with WordPress generally, um, I've had really good luck just kind of making WordPress friends at my local meetups um, and word camps and, you know, even like using Twitter, I know Twitter is kind of having a moment right now, but um, getting into like social media where WordPress people gather is a great way to do that. Um, if you are on a deadline and you need help, um, you can always, you can, you can contract for help, right? There's everything from like folks on Fiverr and Upwork. There's also um, a an outfit called Codable that has like developers that you can work with almost like in a, like a temp agency kind of format. Um, there are, um, there are a lot of different service providers for that. Um, and so you can, you can kind of all the way from the like free, let's puzzle it out together up to like, I don't have time for this. Let me just pay someone to fix this. Um, you can do that as well. And Hey, look at that. Learn WP even has a quick tutorial on finding help. Thanks, Courtney. I think we have folks also chiming in with what they learned today with you know pepper questions too. So staging site sounds so yeah, cool. the yeah, the developer, the developer for the theme is a good reason. Like if the if you have a if you can work with your theme developer, that's even even better if they're able, available to support you. Mm -hmm. Um, how easy is it to change or update your WordPress theme? Yes, you can absolutely use a different theme on a staging site to try it out. And I think you should. Um, a thing that is a little bit challenging about swapping themes on a WordPress site, and this is something that I think they are working on improving, but it has been a little bit of a, of a gotcha with the platform for a while is if you, so you've got your, your existing theme and you've done all this configuration on it and it, you've got it just the way you want it. And then you swap to a different theme and you play around with it and you don't like it. So you try to swap back. All of the settings that you set in the theme before are not preserved. 
So if you're going to start swapping themes around, again, take a backup, <laughs> take a backup, because then you'll have a much easier time getting back to the state you were previously in. All right, I any any? other questions? Um, SEO and security, are they always covered by a plugin? Such a good question. So there's kind of a few schools of thought on this. In my opinion, a lot of security plugins are meant to be used on that kind of budget hosting where they're not doing a lot for you on security, right? Um, if you are using a managed host where you're paying a little bit more money, ideally what they are doing is they are already um, monitoring for threats to WordPress and they are already configuring a web application firewall and they are already um, scanning your site for malware and quarantining things if they find it. However, not every host does that. And so you want to make sure that you know what your host is doing to help with that before you go putting a security plugin on your website. Because security plugins, like I don't want to, I'm not trying to um, complain about them, but they can be quite like resource intensive, right? So you don't want to use one if you don't need one. Um, SEO, an SEO plugin is going to give you some settings to kind of help you um, identify like focus keywords and things like that. But I think the most important SEO is just writing really great content and a plugin can't do that for you. You've got to do that for yourself. So, I mean, I think that there's value to them, but it's not as like SEO is never going to be as simple as like, just install this plugin and whoops, uh, SEO is done. Like that's not how that works. So. Will we have a session in the block editor? I'm sure, uh, I think that's a question for Courtney. On the block editor. So um, specifically about creating content, I believe, because this question came up earlier, there is one on Learn WordPress. Uh, it might be slightly out of date, um, but I will find that link for you. Yeah, the block editor does change quite a bit. It is one of the fastest moving parts of WordPress right now. Um, but I, uh, it's in, in my opinion, it's one of the most exciting. So mostly, and I don't know if that's maybe because I remember like the bad old days of like, you had to like put in a short code anytime you wanted to do something the least bit interesting in the website. It like, it, like it never made any sense. And so the, the block editor, like being able to build my website out like Legos is very exciting to me. <laughs> yeah, I just dropped the link in the, in the chat. Um, cool. Yeah. I think I'm not seeing any additional questions at this point. I well, think Linda just asked, it all. Um, what was the name of the group of coders you said were for for hire? Um, so uh, there is a there is a company called Codable that is um, that like specializes in WordPress. Um, there may be others as well. That's the one I happen to be aware of. Uh, will a chat be available to read later? Yeah, we usually don't save the chat, but um, I can compile these links and share these with all the attendees via the meetup.com event um, or through a through an email through meetup and on the discussion board. Oh, Gutenberg. What is Gutenberg? So Gutenberg is, so Gutenberg was the kind of code name for the block editor project. And so sometimes you will hear it used just to refer to the block editor as opposed to the, to the classic editor. But since the block editor is now the core default editing experience in WordPress, if you were to install, if you were to install the Gutenberg plugin, what you would be getting is like the beta of all the new stuff in the block editor. Um, and just as a note on that, if you are working on like a production site that actually has to be like working in a very predictable fashion all the time, I would not do that. It is super fun to run on like a personal blog or a staging site because you get all the new stuff as soon as it's ready. But um, 
it does, it can and does occasionally like change things on the front end of your site unexpectedly. So um, I wouldn't necessarily run it on a site where you're going to be like frantically having to go back and figure out how to fix those things unless you have the skills to do that. Um, it's not necessarily a great plugin to run on like what we call like a production site, but it's super fun for like a personal site where you're doing a lot of tinkering. All right, I think. <laughs> I love the painting. I, thank you, I love this painting as well. Um, he comes to all my meetings with me. Linda did ask if we're available for a consultation. Um, I personally don't do that, uh, do any consultation, but uh, I do recommend, as Tiffany said, going to your local WordPress meetup, even if it's an online event or just to ask questions on their discussion board. Yeah, even like hanging around on like WordPress hashtags on Twitter has been really valuable for me and like meeting WordPress professionals. I also don't um, don't really take on a lot of outside consultation, mostly because my job keeps me pretty busy with that. And uh, and when I'm done, I'm like, I would like to think about something other than WordPress. <laughs> Much as we love WordPress. So. I love WordPress. I love WordPress, but I do need a few hours a day to think about other stuff. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Oh, that's very flattering. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, that's it for questions. Um, All right. I have a couple of things to share um, on the next slide. Um, yeah. So something I'd like to ask folks that attend these workshops, uh, if you could fill out this quick survey that I shared a link to in the chat. Uh, we are constantly trying to improve the resources that we provide to the WordPress community. Um, and we'd like to know how you like to learn. Do you like these workshops? Do you like these video tutorials? Are you a text-based learner? Um, having your answers here will help us like shape what learn WordPress comes in the years to come. So it would be appreciated if you can fill out the survey. It'll just take you a few minutes. Um, and then on the next slide, um, just to point you towards learn.wordpress.org again, we have more tutorials and online workshops. So you can search for whatever subject you're looking for. If you're not finding the subject you're looking for, uh, please reach out and let us know. Um, you can join our conversations on the Making WordPress Slack, which is where we we chat, uh, like contributors to WordPress are all available, not available, but around <laughs> to, um, over at chat.wordpress.org. Note that this is not a support forum or anything. This is where we work on the WordPress project. So, um, but if you join like the training team channel um, uh, at the chat, um, this is where we develop the content for Learn WordPress. And that is it for me too. All right. Thanks All right. everyone. Well, thank you. If you have any more questions, um, yeah, just reach out via all the different avenues we have here online, um, which is either Slack or um, you, know, you can find us on Twitter. Um, there is also an email address. I, I think it's learn at wordpress.org um, for anything regarding learn WordPress. So. Thank you everyone for being here. And thank you, Tiffany, for presenting. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> All right, folks.